Hello my friends, it's Cami from The Bug Tidbits. I've got kind of a um, out of the ordinary video for you today. It's May and you all know that month gets busy so I didn't quite have enough time to put out a typical video but I thought it'd be fun to put out a Q&A invitation on the channel on Instagram. So I got some questions back from you all um, that you had for me. So I thought I would just go over some of these questions. So I'm gonna look at YouTube questions first and just chat with you about them, give you my answers, and I hope in the very least that this is entertaining for you. <laughs> All right, so the first YouTube question is from Lois and she wants to know if I'm planning to go further into herbs on this channel. And definitely, I really want to explore that more with you. The videos that I've done so far like sharing our dandelion salve or what's in my apothecary. I've really enjoyed doing that and I get great feedback. It's actually one of the things as the keeper of my home, I'm really, really passionate about learning and applying right now because I've seen so many good results from herbs and using them in our home. But right now I am currently um, a student at Herbal Academy and this is an online herbalism school, I guess you would say. They just have a ton of courses and lessons and information. And I really want to understand herbs better. I just feel like if I'm going to get on here and recommend things to you, I want to have a deeper understanding. So I really am in a stage of learning myself right now. But if I come across recipes or salves or soaps, the stuff that I'm just really enjoying creating, I want to get on here and share them with you. So hopefully that's something I'll do regularly and I hope it's something you want to see from me. I will mention if you also want to learn herbalism with me, check out that Herbal Academy. I'll link it below. Um, I think they've given me a coupon code. I'll share that in the description as well if I have one to save you a little money if you enroll in any courses, but it's phenomenal. They just have like mini courses and then they have bigger ones. So if you just want to learn maybe about foraging or the one I'm taking right now is about botanical skincare because I want to make like our own lotions and cosmetics and things. So you can like dive into certain topics in herbalism um, or just like learn it in general. So. And if you want to do it for a business, they have courses for that too. So anyway, if you're really interested in that, don't wait for me. <laughs> Sign up for some of these courses and learn with me. So anyway, that's super fun and hope to share more for sure. All right, let's take a look at the next question. This one's fun. Humble Homemaker, she asks, how long did it take you guys to build your pole barn home up until move in? I know it was very unfinished when you moved in. We're highly considering doing the same thing and just buying some land with a little old house or trailer to live in while we build. Oh, I love talking about this. And in fact, I really need to do a few more detailed videos on our building process. So we started like breaking ground, was it four years ago? But we started in May and we moved in in November. And if you've seen my move in tour video, it was not, even close to a finished functional home, but we moved in. <laughs> I'm not sure how uh, we got through the inspectors and everything, but we got in as soon as possible because we were living in a trailer. Then when it got too cold, we moved into like Airbnbs and jumped around in those and <laughs> for as long as we could stay in them. It was a crazy stage of life. However, I would say like the actual building, keep in mind we did this ourselves, or I should say we designed it, Mr. Tidbits built it with just whatever hired help he could um, muster up. But so I would say about seven months was the process from breaking ground to moving in. And then it's taken like four years to finish it. <laughs> so very non-traditional when it comes to building a home. A lot of sacrifices were made, but it's been very re rewarding and I've enjoyed now that we can kind of look back, I, I really enjoy the fact that my kids got to see us do this, that it's not instant gratification, everything in life, and in fact the things you work the hardest at and you're most patient with 
are usually the most rewarding. So it was a process. Living in the RV was tough. If you haven't seen the RV that we fixed up and lived in for, I want to say six months or so, you'll have to go back on my channel and dig through the old videos. Um, they're a little cringy in the filming sense, but the tour of our RV was way fun. We called it Tidbits on Wheels. Anyway, that was a tough stage of life. And I do have to add, my husband did almost all of it himself while holding like a nine to five job. He worked so hard and it was one of the most stressful periods of his life. I really worried about him in that stage of life and I also was struggling as well trying to have such an instability at home and running a business. That's when I started the planners. I don't know why I felt I needed something else, but um, tough stage of life, but we've made it through <laughs> and um, are just really glad we went through all of that. Would I do it again? No. If we ever do build a home again, I want to hire most of it out. That was, that was hard. Anyway, I hope that gave you some good insight <laughs> into that stage of our life. We have to finish the porch. That's like the last space um, when it comes to like the structure of the house to finish. And then I really want to grab all the footage that I got while building it and kind of piece it together in a video for you. So once we finish that porch, that's just been something that I really want to do. Just take you through the finished exterior and do a full interior home tour. So keep an eye out for that hopefully soon. <laughs> all right. The Cozy Cottage, she asked, I would seriously love tips on how to plan with a spouse who hates planning. I know you are your, I know you and your husband are planners, so I'd love some tips. Great question. So learning to plan with my husband, who is not a natural planner, let's just get that out there. <laughs> Um, has been a work in progress and I would say we're always pivoting. So hopefully that gives you some peace right off the bat. So I learned something recently that has kind of made everything click in this regard of working with my husband, um, both as a business partner, marriage partner, family partner. So I picked up a book called In the Flow and I will link that to you, but I don't know if you've caught on to this trendy thing called cycle syncing, where women learn how to um, work with their hormones throughout a month's time and sync their life to it. It's a fascinating book. Like I just highly recommend it for anybody. It's so good. But it taught me something that has just made working with my husband make a little more sense and help me be more patient. So men typically work I guess I don't want to be too general here. I know all men and women are different. <laughs> we have personalities and everything to uh, consider here. But I want to say, like, I guess in general, men have their hormones, have them cycling in a 24 hour time period. So I don't know if you've noticed that, but men usually wake up there ready to just go, go, go. They work hard earlier in the day and then they start to kind of do more of the sit down focus planning work and then they maybe like connect with other people and then they start to wind down and then they rest. So this is kind of like how their hormones, how most of the world cycles through a day. We've kind of engineered ourselves on a 24 hour cycle that works really well for men. <laughs> but women, we do the same cycle, but in a 28 day ish period. So we have times in the month where we are more thoughtful and we do better at um, ideas and list making and planning. And then we have times in the month where we're more um, just like go, 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 hit it hard, uh, just like checking off that to-do list. Times in the month where we're more social, we connect better. Times in the month where we're um, more introverted and uh, thoughtful and methodical in what we're doing and kind of like that nesting phase where we're wrapping up finished projects um, and then times of the month where we need rest. It's basically like the four seasons. So men work on the 24 hour <laughs> timeline, women that's more of a month timeline. Understanding that has helped me just 
work with my husband so much better. So I can understand that he may not think about the big grand scheme of things like I might in my planning mind and differently during the times of the month, but he's ready to just tackle a day as it is. So what has ended up working better is just with him, I work like a day at a time. If there's stuff I need him to do, I just give him a day at a time, little lists um, or little texts throughout the day saying I need you to do, do, do this. So that works day to day. However, we do have a yearly planning session where we kind of write out the projects around the house or for business or for our kids or whatever that we want to do or hope to do throughout the year. And when I look at like what my husband wants to do or like these big projects that we have planned together, I just have to say to myself, like it's almost guaranteed this is not all gonna get done. We're always way more ambitious in our planning than reality allows for. But what that does for me to have him kind of write that out and sit down with me and go through that is that helps me see where his priorities are so that I can um, maybe let go of the timeline, but focus more on what does he view as most important to get done versus what I have and then how do they, how do they work together. And then that helps me kind of govern each day. So um, that's helpful. Also at the beginning of the week, I've tried to get him to use a planner. He sometimes sticks with it, sometimes doesn't. <laughs> but I, I always use my planner, get my week planned out, and then I sit down with him and say, okay, what do you have going? And we go through that or I say, what do you hope to get done this week? Um, then we can discuss that, get those expectations out there. So that works well for us. And often it even trickles down into the days. So the night before I'll say, okay, we need to get these projects done. What have you worked on? What do you think you're gonna do tomorrow? And we did this, like I know he's home working with me now, but even when he went to work, there was always little projects. So we've kind of done this same flow, whether or not he's home with me or not. So I don't wanna to get too long with on that. That could be a whole video in itself, but hopefully that gave you some ideas. Um, but understanding how we all work and how our bodies are <laughs> biologically engineered to work has been really helpful for me. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. Megan asks, where do you get your design inspiration? Are there specific books, magazines, blogs, or YouTube channels you love? Yes, all of the above. <laughs> uh, this would be another fun video to just share with you some of my favorite like channels and accounts. Um, but I would say the, when I'm sitting down to do a project, like there's a room in mind, um, like the porch, I've been doing this a lot. When I'm designing out a project, I go to Pinterest. I find, you know, Instagram and maybe channels. You run into them occasionally and it's just kind of inspiration you put in your back pocket. You kind of figure out what you like. But when it comes to sitting down and designing the project, I want to narrow my search and make it very visual. So Pinterest is an amazing platform for that. And you guys can definitely check out my Pinterest account. I'm very active there. I'll link it below. Um, but I like Pinterest because I can search and narrow that down to styles, save those images. Um, and then I did a video not too long ago about how I plan these bigger projects. I actually use my planner, the Tidbit Stay Planner which I didn't mention when we were talking about planning, but I make a planner and sell it at tidbitsandcompany.com if you want to check that out. But I use the My Paper Planner and a free online planning program, program called Asana. So I, I use that in different ways to plan out like the big space or um, figure out my design inspiration. So definitely check out that video. I'll link it below. I really dive into how I do that and um, how I organize the inspiration that is so abundantly out there for us today. So great question and maybe I'll do another video sharing my favorite channels or my favorite Instagram accounts. That would be a lot of fun. What tips do you have for beginning bloggers? Ooh, good question. Biggest tip, take Lisa's course, Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone, she did a blogging course. I've taken a lot of blogging courses in my day and hers is the most approachable 
way out there. She just makes it like, yeah, we can do this. This is how I do it. She shows you how to do it. <laughs> Phenomenal course. I will link that for you. So that would be my biggest recommendation. I've told friends and family that as well. I also suggest if you're into, want to get into blogging or YouTubing, narrow down your niche as much as possible and try to like pinpoint your audience and what they want from the get-go. The thing is, when I started a blog, I could be more general and I shared everything and to tell you the truth, I still do. I'm just a Jane of all trades, I guess, and I can't narrow down my interests, so I share a lot with you guys. Course design is probably my favorite, but I just love to learn about everything that helps me keep a home. So, but in this day and age, narrowing your topic and your niche down will help you grow faster. For example, my sister, a few years back, she wanted to start blogging with me, and so we had her take like the tidbit side and just do Instant Pot recipes. And she grew so fast because she was so niche down and specific, and this has spiraled into so many things for her because she was able to grow so fast. And she's actually rebranded, so now she's Insta instafreshmills.com because she opened a business, like a storefront, called instafreezemills.com. I did a video about that as well. Um, but that was like the biggest example to me that the more niche down you can get before you start this content creation gig, the better off you'll be. So that's my biggest tip. I could really go into that further, but that's it for now. Okay, let's look at the next question. I hope it's not too loud in the background. All my kids have friends over right now, so it's a little noisy out there. <laughs> okay, Monica, you asked, I would like to know if you have any religion or faith. I'm gonna need a tall glass of water for this question. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's talk religion. So it's actually funny, every time I mention I'm from Utah, which I do a lot on this channel, I get this question, are you Mormon? <laughs> So yes, I am, but that needs to come with some clarification, if you will allow me to do so. Um, the name Mormon is very much a nickname for our faith um, given to us from our <laughs> origins, and then for a while we adapted it onto ourselves, and then we were instructed not to use that name. Honestly, I think the name Mormon comes with a lot of negative connotation and um, speculation and inaccuracies and, and all of that that, that happens with <laughs> this kind of topic. Anyway, yes, I belong to kind of the mainstream Mormon faith, but we prefer to call ourselves members of the Church of Jesus Christ. And we also end that with um, of Latter-day Saints because we believe that we are um, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ in his latter days. So hopefully that helps you see like we don't we don't worship a Mormon. We don't base our teachings off of any one person. We truly believe that this is the Church of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the reason behind everything we do. So I was born and raised a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and so was my husband. I was raised here in Utah, he grew up in Washington, we ended up meeting at a dude ranch. Whoa, I'm going on a tangent here, maybe avoiding <laughs> the topic I'm a little uncomfortable talking about. Um, anyway, I absolutely love the faith that I belong to and the church I belong to. It is a very family and community focused church and it's just I'm just so grateful to have its truths and doctrine and the community that we have um, to raise my children in it is just so supportive and so good and I absolutely love the church I belong to I guess bringing this up one of the things that I've 
had a hard time as I've answered this question to people like at conferences or when I get together with other people of other faiths um, is trying to help them understand that we are Christians meaning we believe in Jesus Christ we embrace the Bible and love the Bible so very much and strive to be like Jesus Christ I mean we just the whole focus is on Jesus Christ and we consider ourselves Christians However, as I've learned, um, maybe mainstream Christianity does not accept us as Christians. I believe it's because of, I don't know, maybe what I understand is, you know, our differing belief in the Godhead and in different books of scripture. Like we believe in the Book of Mormon. It was a book that came from the ancient inhabitants in America and in the Americas I should say and is a test another testament of Jesus Christ he said in the Bible that other sheep I have that are not of this fold and then too I must also bring to me so um, this is kind of the basis for our belief in the Book of Mormon I love the Book of Mormon I find so much truth and peace in it and when tough topics come about my church, I really just come back to either the Book of Mormon is of God or it is of the devil. And when I read it, it changes my heart and my life and I find great truths in it. And I've seen it in other people's lives. My own father's life was greatly changed for the better when he um, fell in love with the Book of Mormon. So I guess I just wanna bring up, if you're thinking, yeah, I've heard about the Mormons, they don't believe like most Christian faiths do, so they're not Christians. I guess I just want to point out here um, that that kind of belief, it hurts a little bit, it stings a little bit for me <laughs> because um, our belief in Christ is so strong and sometimes when I'm accused of not being a Christian it almost feels like they're saying just because your understanding of Christ is not the exact same as mine, that means you don't believe in Christ. And that's hard for me to stomach because Christ is everything for me. Everything, his atonement, his resurrection, his teachings, his love, his grace, it's absolutely everything. And is really the foundation of my beliefs and my church and my faith. So. Anyway, if you ever have an opportunity to speak to a Mormon, um, maybe go in understanding that, that we truly do view ourselves as Christian. And if you're interested in learning more about what we believe, some of our doctrines are quite a bit different, then I would say mainstream Christianity. Go ahead and check out the website, churchofjesuschrist.org. You'll find all sorts of information and videos about what we believe. But I've actually ran into a YouTube channel lately that I have been obsessed with and so grateful for. So it's this guy named Pastor Jeff. I believe he's the evangelical pastor living in Missouri. And he has done this channel where he claims to be exploring the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints through the lens of curiosity and not criticism because he you know studying in his pastoral ministries um, was kind of trained to be very critical of our faith and if you're just curious to see like a pastor's perspective as he's learning about our church it is so good i love it mostly because he's teaching us how to explore other faiths with more tolerance and curiosity and just wanting to connect and understand and be kind and how to talk to other people of different faiths. I just really appreciate his channel and I think you'll love it if you love to kind of dive into religion and all that stuff, but I love how he is learning about my faith with just this like hunger for curiosity. Why do they believe that? Why did they do that? And so I would say some of the things he's learning and that he reacts to, um, sometimes I'm like, oh, that's that's not accurate or <laughs> or you're bringing up that tough topic, <clears throat> polygamy, a little maybe inaccurate. <laughs> but um, I love his approach 
And usually if there's something that he brings up that makes me scratch my head a little bit, I love to dive into his comments because there's a lot of um, members of my church and non-members who pipe up with what they know and some clarifications that has actually strengthened my testimony even more about the truth of my church. So really enjoy his channel and if this is of interest to you at all, <laughs> check it out. It's called Hello Saints. I'll link it below. But there's that in a nutshell. So I, I absolutely love my religion and faith and it enriches my life so much. And honestly, I love to talk about it. So if you have any more questions about it that are kind and curious and not critical, leave them in the comments. I would love to chat with you about it. Well, let me just address a few of the questions that I got on Instagram and we'll wrap up this video. All right. Someone asked, when are your planners coming out? Friends, I actually don't know if they're gonna happen this year. Um, the cost of the inflation and what they cost to produce last year really hurt me. And I may need some time to recoup from that before I can produce them again. I'm not saying that for sure. I may have a miracle and flood of interest on tidbitsandcompany.com that allow me to do this, but right now, I'm a little stretched and not sure I can pull it off this year, which is sad, but I'm not giving up the dream and I love these planners and love making them for you. Um, but times are tough, so we're going to adapt as we need to. Sorry, the dog is barking. I hope that's not too loud. Here's another question. How long did the stone wall take your husband to plan and execute? I asked him that. He said it was about 15 hours. She's talking about the stone wall in our pantry space. It's a beautiful wall. I love it, but it was kind of a smaller wall. So if you've got a bigger project in mind, it could take some time. But I would say it took the better part of three days during his work time, you know, after we get kids going and homeschool done. But it was kind of a big project. He was pretty sore afterwards. <laughs> Just a lot of manual labor to do all that. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, some more interesting comments or questions on Instagram. What's your favorite Garth Brooks song? <laughs> this is my high school friend. She knows I'm obsessed with Garth Brooks. That would definitely be Standing Outside the Fire. Or If Tomorrow Never Comes. Ooh, tough one. <laughs> Alright, another one. Were you voted my most likely to have 10 kids in high school? Do you still have a crush on your seminary teacher from high school? All right, we're gonna stop there. My old high school buddy's having fun with me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video. Um, I enjoyed making it and chatting, this, chatting about you with these things. So thanks for stopping by this week. And I will be back next week to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home. <laughs>